and today I'm here to bring you my big October book haul. And this video is being sponsored in part by Disney Hyperion and the Blowback Trilogy. Now for the month of October and probably for the, you know, extended future, we have a lot of really amazing book releases coming out. So every month I just feel like I'm accumulating books left and right. So this is a bit of a bigger book haul. So that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right in because, you know, let's just get started. No point in making you wait. So the first book I'm going to show off is the Proustopia Book Club Pick of the Month for the month of October. And this month Sasha and I picked and we loved and we're so excited about it. The An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I've already read and done a full non-spoiler review of this book. Spoiler alert, I really liked it. But this is a YA fey fantasy story that's very, very short. It's incredibly lyrical. It follows our main character, Isabel, who lives in a town called Whimsy, which is a neighboring town to the fey world. In this world, fey cannot craft or create anything in fear of them literally crumbling to dust. So human craft is very, very valuable to them. Isabel makes her living painting portraits. She is a master of her craft. Faye from all over the realm seek her out for her work. At the beginning of the story, she gets her first royal client and she makes the mistake of painting real human sorrow in his eyes. That sets her off on an adventure from there. I really like this book. A lot of people go, oh, this sounds like just like Akatar. It's really, I promise, different than Akatar. I can understand from the synopsis why it would feel similar. But anyway, I've gone, enough, gone on enough about this book. It was really good. The next book I'm going to show off is one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Ship of the Dead. This is book three to the Magnus Chase series. I've read the first two, I've, like I say in every video involving Rick Riordan. I've read every Rick Riordan book, and this is one of Rick's newer series. I absolutely love it. This is a Norse mythology story, and we follow our main character, Magnus, who is not really one for fighting, which I actually feel like is a very unique and interesting element as a main character to Rick's new series. Series. At the beginning of the first book, Magnus actually dies and gets resurrected by a Valkyrie and sent to the Hotel Valhalla where he makes friends, goes on adventures, meets a rather sassy, magical talking sword. This is obviously the third book in the series. A lot of crazy events have happened in the first two. There's actually quite the cliffhanger at the end of the second book. I'm dying to pick this up. This is definitely my next read. I absolutely love this series. All the characters are so refreshing. Obviously it has all the wonderful humor elements that we love and expect from Rick Riordan's books. And it's just so good. I just love Rick Riordan every time. It's just, it's a thing. Next book I grabbed was another really highly anticipated novel and that is Into the Bright Unknown by Ray Carson. This is the third and I believe final book to the Gold Dust trilogy. I'm actually not sure what this trilogy is called. I read the first two books of this trilogy a few months ago and I really enjoyed them. This is a historical fantasy novel set during the gold rush. We follow our main character who is actually able to sense gold. You follow her in this story as she kind of makes her journey west but also kind of gets wrapped up in a varying amounts of plots. She meets a lot of characters. This book is so good. It has a very interesting magical element but it also deals with a lot of historical elements as well and it's just a very enjoyable series and I'm very excited to see how the last book concludes. The next book I have to show off is another book that I'm so excited to pick up. Monica told me about this book and it just sounded incredible so I just could not say no and that is The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is a story that has so many elements to it that just intrigue me on so many levels. First off this is a book that is written from the perspective of a historian. So it's kind of like a history of a time. It's not a book where you're reading from the perspective of the events as they unfold, but rather they're being reflected on and also having a bias created by the historian who is ever recording the events. And this particular story follows the world where something interesting happens where women gain the power to basically electrocute people by touch. And that kind of changes the power dynamics within this world and in this society. And we're reading about that change in power dynamic from a male historian's perspective. So many things about this just sound incredibly interesting to me. I've heard amazing things about this book and honestly, really want to pick this up soon. I just, ugh. book literally intrigues me to no end. I just need to know. I want to know. I just want to know. I need to know. The next two books I have to show you guys are part of the same series. First one being Blowback 07 and the newly released sequel, which is Blowback 63. Three. And these, of course, are by Brian Mahill. And these are really interesting novels that centered around sports and time travel. And 
the first novel we follow two twins who don't really have a lot in common. They're kind of always at odds with each other, but the one thing that they do have in similarities is the ability to play this very odd old instrument left to them by their mother. The beginning of the book, a variety of events happen. Accidentally sends the quarterback of their school back to 1907, and he then has to kind of figure out what the crap is going on, trying to figure out how to get home. That is the premise of the first book. Now the second book takes another sports historical perspective. So now the second book obviously takes place after the events of the first book, but this time the twins get involved with going back to the Civil War in 1863. This time instead of the sport centering around football, it centers around baseball. This trilogy combines a lot of very interesting elements I feel like I don't see very often. I personally am a huge fan of sports, so I'm interested to see kind of this. So I'm very interested to see a historical perspective of sports, but also a time travel element as well as familial strife exists at the center of what is happening in this book trilogy. I don't know, these sound very interesting to me and I'm excited to have them. The next book I got this month is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. Jennifer Egan is a very famous author. One of her most notable works, I would argue, is A Visit from the Goon Squads, which won her the Pulitzer. This is her newest and it's actually surprisingly like historical fiction-y, but I do feel like it being from Jennifer Egan that I should expect some sort of odd twist, which I am all about. I love a good odd twist. This is an atmospheric noir thriller set at the turn of the century in New York, and I also believe it has to deal with gangsters in this time era. I love historical fiction. I actually really enjoy noir thrillers. I don't read them very often, but it is definitely my preferred thriller setting. Basically, ever since I read Night Film, I am forever changed. This just sounds dark and eerie and just delicious, and I just want to read it and pick it up hopefully soon, but also me with every book. <laughs> Next up is another highly anticipated book for me, and that is Jane Unlimited by Kristin Cashour. This book is literally blinding. I honestly didn't even know what this book was about when I bought it, just because I love Kristin Cashour, who you guys may know from the Graceling series, which was one of the original fantasy series I read way back in the day, and I loved it. So this actually follows our main character, Jane, who, who would consider her life up to the point of where she starts in the story to be very ordinary, and she feels like she's always been craving adventure. She actually always promised her aunt, who's recently passed away, to always be adventurous. So one day, when someone from her past kind of blows in town and invites her to this mansion and party gathering, she accepts. When she goes to this mansion, a variety of events unfold, specifically five, that all have the ability to completely transform Jane's life, but they all have a price. It sounds very vague and very vague on purpose. This also sounds like an incredibly intriguing novel, and I'm interested to see if we get a read about each five, like if she took each path, what would happen? I'm not sure, but I really want to find out. This sounds cool as heck. This book should be of no surprise, and that is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the illustrated edition. I've also already read this book this month. I cannot not read these books right away. I loved it. It was a joy to read. The illustrations are beautiful. I love The Prisoner of Azkaban. My only real complaint about this is I wish there were more illustrations, but that's just because I always want more from Jim K. I'm really interested to see how ginormous the fourth book is going to be, though. I think I want to weigh it, because I probably will weigh like 50 pounds. You could kill someone with that book, probably. Next books were sent to me for review by Kirkwall, and that is London Belongs to Me and the newly released sequel, London Will You Wait? I've already read London Belongs to Me. I read it last year, and I have a review on it. And I'm currently reading London While You Wait, which is the sequel, and I'm about a quarter of the way through, and I'm really enjoying it so far. This is such a fun contemporary series. It follows our main character, Alex Sinclair, who at the beginning of the first story moves to London to pursue her dream of play writing. Alex personally deals with a lot of internal struggles. She, she struggles heavily with anxiety and panic attacks and she feels a lot of self-doubt about pursuing her own dreams. In the first novel we follow Alex as she tries to settle in London, make friends, but most importantly pursue her love and passion for playwriting. I personally love the theatrical elements to these books. I was a theater nerd for most of my life and I love actually reading plays. To read from the perspective of a playwright was really enjoyable. Now the sequel takes place pretty much directly after a lot of the events that happened in the first book. So we get to experience and see a lot of our favorite characters from the first one, but however there's a lot of new there's a lot of new drama storylines involved. I don't want to spoil anything that happened in the first book. Alex again is still struggling with her identity as a playwright. She's still struggling with a lot of her anxiety and panic attacks, which is something that I really related to while reading this book as I personally also struggle from anxiety. And you just see a lot of dramatic relationship elements thrown in this book as well. I'm a quarter 
quarter of the way through and things are starting to rev up. But yes, this is a really enjoyable contemporary series set in London following uh, fandom culture, playwriting, and all sorts of dorky love as well. So. I like it. Next book I have to show you guys is Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance by Ruth Emmy Lang. And now I had never actually heard of this book, but I read some reviews about it on Book of the Month. And this just sounds something right up my street. Apparently, this is a literary fiction novel that pulls like story elements and nostalgia elements from a variety of different fairy tales and like wraps them up into this one narrative. Apparently, it's supposed to make you like feel transported back to your childhood. And that alone was enough to sell me. I was like, fairy tales, childhood nostalgia, fantastical elements, like, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, this follows an orphan who was raised by wolves. Also, sold on that line alone. And the last two books I have to show you guys are the two books I picked up from Book Outlet this month. As you guys know, I have a Book Outlet page, which I'll leave linked down below. But the first one I got is Emma by Alexander McCall Smith. I'm a huge Jane Austen fan, and there was a set of books released, I believe, a few years ago where they basically retell Jane Austen stories in a modern setting. And I've always been really intrigued by them. I do find them to be rather controversial. Like, if you read the reviews, people either love them or hate them, and I'm kind of interested to see where I fall in. I decided to pick up one because it was such a good price so ultimately if I don't love it it's not the end of the world. So yeah this follows our main character Emma who recently moved back to her village after she graduated and she's and she's currently living with her parents until she you know raises enough money to kickstart her interior design business. I really enjoy the story of Emma. I'm interested to see how it becomes a modern retelling. I sometimes find these a hit or miss, so again, just interested to see where I fall. Last book I have to show you guys, I feel like a lot of you are gonna be excited to see, and that is Susanna Clarke's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This is like a quintessential dark gothic fantasy story. It is a magician story set in London about rival magicians trying to kill each other. It sounds awesome. It's so long and that's why I have been putting it off for so long. Like literally you could like, this book is larger than my head. But the setting is incredible and I've read so many reviews of people saying they just absolutely flew through it and I'm no stranger to long books so I thought this would be a wonderful book to pick up. I think I really want to read it around like Christmas time when it's dark and cold and I just don't want to leave my house. I thought this would be a really great book to have in my arsenal. My arsenal. <laughs> Alrighty guys, that is my October book haul. Let me know down below what book you think I should get to first, as I would love to know. And I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!